Hey, yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Justice League of America Team History. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, Justice League of America Team History is the first story arc that we get for the Justice League since the Cry for Justice story, which had a lot of crying in it, not just from the comic book characters, but also from the comic book readers. With that said, does Justice League team history bring the Justice League title back to its former glory, or does it follow the continuous pattern of crap that we've been kind of getting with the Justice League as of recently? The story is broken up into two parts. The first part deals with, for lack of a better term, the underdog Justice League. What's left of the Justice League of America after Final Crisis, and after Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman basically leave the team? The team is left with Zatanna, Vixen, Dr. Light, Red Tornado, Plastic Man, and Jon Stewart. And in this, Jon Stewart's not even in the story, but he's still kind of part of the Justice League. Now, this Justice League of America is dealing with the effects of the Blackest Night. Old Justice League members and villains coming back to haunt them, particularly members from Justice League Detroit and also the original Dr. Light, the evil pedophile rapist twisted individual Dr. Light, not the cool one that we have right now. The Justice League needs to work together to survive the Black Society and to take down their inner demons from their old friends. After that, we get the majority of the story, which deals with the team history story, for lack of a better term. And basically, it starts off with Donna Troy talking about how she's gone through a lot with the Blackest Night. She's seen her, her friends and her family and her children come back to life as zombies and then only to see them die once again. This has really affected her to the point that she doesn't want to do superheroing anymore. It causes too much hurt and too much pain. Wonder Woman basically comes in and tells her to man up because Wonder Woman has a job for her. I find this a little out of character for Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman basically says to Darn Troy, put all your stuff aside even though you just saw that your baby came back to life as a zombified Black Lantern, put that all aside and do something for me. Now, one could argue this is Wonder Woman basically trying to get Don Troy's mind off things, and that's basically kind of the theme in the story for Don Troy, but it doesn't change the fact that Wonder Woman just shows up and be like, ah, forget your dead baby and your husband and everyone else. Just man up and do what I tell you. This feels a little out of character. At the very least, Wonder Woman should come up give her a hug, you know, make her feel good, and then say, you know, I have something that might help you out, get your mind off things, please, just hear me through with this. No, she just basically boxes her around. Anyways, Donna Troy accepts it, because she does think it's going to take her mind off things, and she basically re-recruits a new Justice League of America. Now, this Justice League of America, for lack of a better term, are the members from the previous Justice League team in Cry for Justice. If you look at the comic right here, you basically get to see most of the members in this. You got Cyborg, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, The Atom, Green Arrow, Dr. Light, Guardian, Batman, Dick Grayson, Monel, Donna Troy herself, and Kong Gorilla. In addition to that, Black Canary also shows up, but she's really not an official member of the team. Now, this team goes around and they do what they need to do and they fight against the bad guys. And then. That lasts for about an issue, and then the team starts to fall apart again because of what happens with Green Arrow killing Prometheus. So really the team is left with only Don and Troy, Kong Gorilla, a Smurf, and Batman. And that's basically the end of the story. There is a uh, smaller story in this where um, Dr. Impossible and all of his pretend fourth world friends are going around and stealing different pieces create a device, but it really doesn't have too much to do with the story. It's just kind of a side story, and I guess it's setting up a future event. But with that said, the story just basically ends with those four teammates standing together. So on to the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it, because there's a, some good, there's some bad, and, well, I'll let you know if you should get it. Good. Well, the good thing is, is that I really like the Blackest Night storyline. Uh, see, the thing is, is this Justice League that is really left with a lot of C-rank, B-rank characters like Zatanna, Dr. Light, Vixen, etc., etc. I actually like these themes. It shows these characters are working together to keep something alive while being burdened by the weight of the actual Justice League. 
if you look at this, the Justice League of America, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Martian Manhunter, Aquaman, Green Lantern, Hawkman, Adam, all these characters, and these are big name characters, either in the Silver Age or just in general. And they have made such an impact on the Justice League that you get all these b rank characters, and when all these other characters go away for whatever reason, they die, or they, they move on, or they have no time for the Justice League, these guys are trying to hold the Justice League together. And it's actually a cool dynamic for the characters. In addition to that, these characters have to work together to stop all these Black Lanterns. And the thing that also makes this team appealing is the fact that they're not as dominantly, overbearingly powerful that the normal Justice League is. One of the great things about the Justice League, and don't get me wrong, it is a great thing, is the fact that these are larger-than-life characters going up against larger-than-life situations. They have superpowers up the wazoo, and they're basically unstoppable. But it's kind of cool to see vulnerable Justice League, a Justice League that has to work together and struggle through a situation. And we get that with the Black Science story. Another good thing is the art. The art is done by Mark Bagley, and he also did some of the art for Trinity, not all of it. He really has a good tone with the art. I really like how he does his characters. There's very few things that I don't like him doing, so it really helped out the title and it helped out reading this, having good art in there. I also like the fact that when Donna Troy comes in, she actually recruits a kind of cool Justice League. The only problem I have with it is it's just too big. Of course, that changes towards the end of the story. I like the fact that she brought in characters such as Batman, Starfire, Cyborg, former Teen Titan members, but also having like Hal Jordan, Green Arrow on there too, senior members. So those are the good points. Bad. Here we go. There was no story. <laughs> there basically was no story. Most of the story is about them reminiscing about old Justice League and talking about their problems. I said it before and I said it again, the Justice League of America is a comic based off larger than life superheroes fighting supervillains. It's not about characters having emotional problems, going through life. I mean, that's all well and good, but that's the stuff like the Teen Titans and all that. I don't want drama in my Justice League book. I want to see Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, or anyone within the vicinity of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman that are their teammates, kicking the living shit out of people like the Shaggy Man, Blockbuster, Darkseid, Lex Luthor. Hell, they can go beat up Batmite for all I care. But I want to see these characters just go out and fight and have good stories. That's what the Justice League of America is about. There's a little too much drama in this for me. And I know that sounds a little weird, but the Justice League title isn't about drama. Another bad thing is this team falls apart right away. It starts off with all these members plus more. And then all that's left is Dick Grayson, Donna Troy, Kong Gorilla, and the Smurf. And it's really like, really, what happened to the team? It just fell apart. mon -El goes off somewhere. There's no explanation to what happens to the Guardian. Dr. Light has to stay home because her kids are sick. No, I'm not joking with you. That's literally the, the reason. Her kids have a cold, so she can't do superheroing. At least we're guaranteed to get her back once her kids are no longer sick. Starfire can't be around Dick Grayson because she still loves him and she knows Dick doesn't love her anymore. I don't know what happened to Adam. I'm sure he's hunting after Green Arrow along with Green Lantern. Green Arrow's on the run. Sideboard just kind of disappears. All these characters just disappear. That's the thing. And it just feels so... I don't know. It feels so cheap, the fact that you give us these characters making this new Justice League that actually looks appealing and then you just, you just kind of take it away. So it's like, why did you even do that? I don't know now if they're doing the Justice League now with a full roster, but having only four characters at the end of the story feels like the end of the Justice League. See, the thing is, is that the Justice League of America is a title that works well when you have big names on it. That's the case. If you look at the history of the Justice League, and let's just take a moment to look at it. When you first start off with Justice League of America Volume 1, the, the original Justice League stuff, you had the seven founding members. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, all top dogs in the uh, DC Universe, doing what they do best, fighting evil. And everyone they recruited from that point on were top dogs. Black Canary, Green Arrow, uh, Aquaman, uh, Hawkman, Adam, they recruited more big names. Then we go on to like Justice League Detroit. 
which had Aquaman and Man uh, Martian Mayhem. So that's really about it. Everyone else was kind of like, blah, nothing. And then Justice League International, which did have a lot of miscellaneous characters, and it did work, but it was more about the writing than the characters. And eventually that even became unpopular. Then we had JLA when Grant Morrison came in. Again, seven founding members. Well, of course, Green Arrow, uh, Lantern, and Flash are different characters, but they're still Green Lantern and Flash. The comic was great. It l ran for a long time. Then we had Justice League of America Volume 2, which is this. It started off good, but then it started to fall apart because you kept on taking members away. Slowly but surely, you plucked Hal Jordan out and you replaced him with Jon Stewart. Nothing wrong with Jon Stewart, but Hal J Jordan is more popular of a character. Then you plucked Batman out, and then you plucked Superman out, then you plucked Wonder Woman out. And it's really, what are we left with? That's not the Justice League. And that's a big problem with this, is the fact that it's not the Justice League. DC, listen to me. I know you got Batman R.I.P. and the return of Bruce Wayne and all that stuff going on with uh, Bruce Wayne, you know. You got him just not around because of the Batman Robin stuff. I know Superman was doing that World of Krypton and now he's walking around the world meeting up with his old Joe Schmoes. And I know Wonder Woman is getting revamped, rebooted, and read up the ass. It really doesn't matter. You need to have a solid Justice League team. Look at the people that you brought back to life. Aquaman, Martian Manhunter, Barry Allen, Green Lantern, that's four people right there that granted they're doing the Brightest Day storyline, but it's not like you can't put them in the fucking book. Put them in the book. But hey, you know, DC, you really gotta look at this because this is your biggest team-up comic and you're really letting it fall short. Which brings me to whether or not you should get it. Well, I did say a lot of bad. Probably more so than good, and that's for good reason. This story you should probably not get. The only way I would ever recommend this is for the Blackest Night story, which is actually pretty good, and I really enjoyed that. But then again, Blackest Night isn't really that old, so you could probably just go out and buy the individual issues and save yourself money. If you ever were to get this, get it in trade, but I still wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't even feel like it does anything for the Justice League. Now, I could be totally wrong in that the stories actually pick up, more characters come in, the Justice League comes to an actual team, in that there's actually something done with these fourth world characters, wannabes, but really, as an individual standalone story, this sucks major monkey ball. I'm not gonna lie. It's like Rafiki, you know, the baboon from uh, Lion King, it stood right in front of me, took out his salty little balls and waved them right in my face, <laughs> because that's how disappointed I was in. How about this? I'll give you a hint. This made Cry for Justice look good. How about that? I was really disappointed. I really brought my hopes up when getting this, and I probably shouldn't. Hopefully, they can bring Justice League of America back on track. And really, last thing before I go is this. DC, think. Think, okay? When you're done with your things with Wonder Woman and Superman, look, you got Barry Allen back. You got Hal Jordan back. You got Aquaman back. You got Martian Manhunter back. When you're done with Superman and Wonder Woman, you're going to get them back. And listen, Bruce Wayne's coming back. Bring the original Justice League together. Keep it the core seven. Don't recruit anyone. Make it those people. Because that's when the Justice League works best. Is when it's the big names going up against the big evil. This is fact. Big names against big evil. And don't throw drama in there. You can put a little character stuff in there. That's fine. Stories need that. Every once in a while. But this is an action story about fighting bad guys. Look at your previous work and fix the Justice League, because this is one of my favorite titles, and I really don't want to pick it up. Okay, so I got off on a land, uh, rant right there, but honestly, for you guys, the readers, I would avoid Justice League team history. And if you want to read the Black and White story, just go pick it up in individual issues. I, I don't usually get individual issues, but I know other people do, so it's probably best to do that. So with that said, I'm going to end this video review here. This is Andrew saying, peace out for now.